guys, my name is Erica and today we're going to be looking at a year's worth of empties. So I have a couple bags in front of me now and how we're going to do this is we're going to break it off into amazing products that I love and then there's going to be products that are okay, like they're so-so, it's, it's whatever and then there's going to be the products that I don't like and I would not recommend. So yeah, let's get right into it. So I have the first bag here that I have and these are all the products that I extremely love and I would definitely repurchase again. So the first thing that I have here is the Macadamia Natural Oil Deep Repair Mask. This is an excellent mask for your hair. It definitely nourishes your hair. It makes sure that your dry ends will be revitalized. Overall, amazing hair mask. I would totally recommend it. Next thing that I have here is the Neutrogena Oil-Free Eye Makeup Remover. This is a great drugstore eye makeup remover. Definitely gets off most of my eye makeup. Sometimes it's a little fussy with the waterproof mascara, but besides that, great product, totally recommend. The next thing that I have here is the Beauty People Professional Line Lip and Eye Makeup Remover. It's super cheap. I bought this for like $6 and um, it's a Korean brand, but they do a really amazing job um, getting everything off. I have no troubles with this. It gets off every bit of makeup on my face from things that are super hard to get off like eyeliners, mascaras, to things that are really easy. Overall, amazing. The next thing that I have here are the the Super Blemish Balm BB Creams from Skin79. I have the gold version and the pink version. This one is the original BB Cream that first came out. It's probably one of the more well-known BB Creams. This was definitely the OG and then this came out later on. But these are amazing BB Creams. If you're just starting out and you want to find a BB Cream that is reputable, that has been around for a long time, and has worked on a lot of skin types then give these a try these are really great the only thing is the formula sometimes can be kind of gray because that helps to brighten your face and lighten your skin tone so if you might just be a bit worried about that it can look a little ashy but for the most part these are really great uh, I remember using them when I was in junior high and high school and yeah I loved it the next thing that I have here are both peeling masks that are from the face shop. I have the white jewel peeling mask which is I think made out of pearls or something along that line. There's a pearl on the packaging. And then I have the jelly apple peeling. These are really great products. I remember the lady told me that this one is definitely a product that you should only use once or twice a week. Definitely not an everyday chemical exfoliator. But she said that this one is pretty good for a daily use and yeah I used it all up and both of these were totally amazing they did really great things for my skin for my dry skin in the winter and also evening out my skin texture the next thing that I have here is probably one of my skincare holy grails it's the skin food rice mask wash off this is a really great product. It's made from little bits of tiny rice that help to physically exfoliate your skin while you're using it. But the main priority of this skincare product is to brighten your skin tone, to fade acne scars, to moisturize your skin. And it does all of those three claims and it is a great price, amazing product. The next thing that I have here is the L'Oreal Paris Subline Radiance Cleansing Oil. This is a great cleansing oil. I really love this. You take, I usually use two pumps and I slather it all over my face. I rub it in for a minute and then afterwards I put some water on my hands and then I continue to rub it off and it starts becoming milky and it completely comes off of your skin but it does not leave your skin feeling dry. Amazing drugstore product. I would definitely recommend you pick it up if you're looking for something like this. The next product that I have here is the BioSilk Silk Therapy Hair Oil. This is 
an amazing product. I really love it. It really helps to keep my hair moisturized and soft because sometimes when I wash my hair, the next morning, when I wake up with my hair, it's dry and it's not as movable and definitely a bit more brittle. But when I use this, it's super soft, super luscious, you know, and straight. So yeah, I would recommend this. The next thing that I have here are two really awesome lip balms. I use lip balms like crazy in the winter and even all throughout the year because here in Edmonton we have really dry weather. But the first lip balm that I have here is the Smith lip balm. They sell these at Sephora and it's the Minted Rose lip balm. It's super moisturizing uh, and this tube, I used it for like two years. Like it was amazing and it was only $8, a very good investment if I do say so myself. The next product that I have here is a lip balm that I got in one of my beauty subscription boxes. I don't necessarily remember which one it is now but I think it's either Glossy Box or Ipsy. I think Glossy Box. But this is, it's all in French but it's by the, um, it's by the company Lollipops, but this was an amazing, amazing lip balm and I really loved it because it had kind of a sweet taste but it wasn't sickly, like it didn't make me want to kind of puke because I felt like there was cake pops all over my lips or like, you know, really heavy cream all over my lips. It was a really sweet, flirty, fresh scent. The next thing that I have here is the It's Skin Power 10 Formula. WH Effector. This formula is kind of like an ampoule or a serum, but they have a lot of different types of these that do all different types of functions, but this one is mainly for whitening and brightening and fading acne scars. This was an amazing product. I really loved it. The next thing that I have here are the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Dark Circle Erasers. So you can tell that I really love these products. They were super, super great. I had a lot of the treatment correctors rather than the treatment concealers, but I would say they all worked like somewhat the same. All of them used to have sponge but I kind of decided to rip it out one day because I was scared it was going to get really dirty and grow bacteria and stuff but after that I really did regret it because it was harder to use afterwards but yeah I used up all of these and I would definitely recommend these. These are one of the best sellers in the drugstores for concealers and yeah you would not regret it. The next thing that I have here is a sunscreen that I bought in Hong Kong and I think it's from the brand OMI and it's the Sun Bear Strong Cool Plus SPF 50 PA++++. So in Asian countries they do amazing sunscreens because they really want to protect their skin from aging and from sunspots. So they have really great sunscreens. So this is a really nice thin formula that I can use on my face and I can use on my body, my arms, my legs. And it's just really nice because there's a cooling factor in this and it's really minty and it just is so nice on a hot summer day. And this, although it looks super, super small, it lasted me for a year, so I really enjoyed this. On to the next bag that we have here. These are all of the products that were just so-so. They were okay. Like, they definitely didn't wow me, but they weren't horrible, and I really just tried to kind of use it up. So, first thing that I have here is the Cushy Anti-Cellular Booster. I got this in a glossy box, and its claim to fame is kind of to reduce cellulite and you put it all over your legs or wherever you have cellulite on your body and it's supposed to kind of help tighten your skin and reduce cellulite. So I really don't know if it did that. I just used it. It was kind of just like a meh product. It was whatever. I had it so I was going to use it. The next thing that we have here is a Freeman uh, mask. It's the Dead Sea Mineral Anti-Stress Mask. So similar things with this, this mask is supposed to clear your pores and smooth your skin. And quite honestly, I kind of just used it, I slathered it on, it was super cheap, it's like $4, $5 at the drugstore, and you know what, it was okay. I really didn't see any results after using this for a prolonged period of time, it was just kind of whatever. Next I kind of have two St. Ives masks, one of them is the 
smooth and nourished oatmeal scrub and mask. So for this mask here, it was quite moisturizing, but it definitely didn't wow me. There were still some particles or granules that it had to kind of exfoliate the skin, but I found them to be somewhat irritating and no matter how hard I tried to exfoliate my face and not try to get this product in my eyes, it would always end up getting in my eyes. So this is going to be a pass for me. I most likely won't purchase it again. The other mask from St. Ives is the Even and Bright Pink Lemon Mandarin Orange Scrub. This again, same kind of issues. It did make my skin feel a bit better. Nothing noticeable, nothing quite noticeable though. And again, they had little granules in them to exfoliate the skin, but I found them to be a little irritating and rough and it ended up always getting into my eyes. The next thing that I have here is a Neutrogena Ultra Light Cleansing Oil. It's supposed to just remove your makeup and I think it was okay. It did what it said it was going to, but it definitely was harder to remove makeup. It didn't always move, move everything. So I always had to go back with another step. This was okay. I wouldn't purchase it again. The next thing I have here is the Macadamia Natural Oil Healing Oil Spray. I found this to be okay. It definitely didn't make a huge difference in my hair, but yeah. Next thing I have here is the Caudalie Beauty Elixir Water. This has been a really brave product by a lot of different beauty gurus that I've watched before, but I would say for the price that it is, I wouldn't purchase it again. It was refreshing, but honestly, it's really expensive for what it is, and really it's just kind of fancy water to me. The next thing that I have here is a shampoo by Organics. It's the Ever Straight Brazilian Keratin Therapy Conditioner. I bought this on a whim because it was on sale this one time and I ended up using all of it. It was really nourishing and nice. I mean, I wouldn't purchase it again just because of the price and just because it didn't wow me. It did moisturize my hair, but it wasn't anything that was life changing. The next thing that I have here is another hair oil. It's from Garnier. It's the Sleek and Shine Moroccan Sleek Oil Treatment. This was okay. I found that it did what it was supposed to do, which was moisturize my hair. The smell was okay, but I wouldn't repurchase this again just because I'm not really a huge fan of Garnier. I've heard before in the past that they don't really use the best ingredients, so yeah. The next thing that I have here is the IT Hair Care 12 in 1 Amazing Leave in Treatment. What it says it does is repairs, protects, and strengthens. It did do those things, but again, it didn't make my hair extremely moisturized like the other hair masks that I have, so it was just okay. The next thing that I have here is an oldie. It's a concealer by L'Oreal, and I think it's called the Lumi Concealer, but it's in this kind of pen formula here, and I thought this was okay. It definitely didn't have a lot of coverage. I would say it had light coverage medium at most. It's definitely more of like a highlighting concealer. So yeah, I thought it was just okay. The formula was okay. I didn't really like the packaging just because sometimes the concealer will kind of dry up at the end here. So it's definitely harder to use and it gets more dry. So yeah. Now let's move on to the products that I thought were just not good, just kind of awful. You know, they're just products like I just need to get rid of this. I need to use this up those types of products. So we have it all in this bag here. A lot of these you'll notice is from a particular brand and it's Nivea. I was looking for a drugstore skincare routine that I could start up and I hit one of the drugstores near my place called London Drugs to pick up a lot of the products from this brand Nivea. So let's start off with the first thing. We have the Gentle Cleansing Cream for dry skin. For me, this personally was horrible at removing my makeup. It couldn't even tackle my eye makeup at all and my face makeup was hard to get off with this as well. I would sometimes wipe my face with a makeup remover after and there would still be lots of makeup on my face. This definitely did not clean my face of all of its makeup and impurities and gunk, so I would not recommend this at all. The next thing that we have here is the Sensitive 3-in-1 Micellar Cleansing Water from Nivea again. Just not good at all. Same issue with the cleansing cream. It's just not effective at removing makeup. Next thing that we have here is the Gentle Foaming Cleanser 
from Nivea. Again, this is all the dry to sensitive skincare line and honestly it didn't really irritate my skin and it didn't dry it out but it definitely did not remove my makeup effectively which is what it's supposed to do so I wouldn't recommend the cleansing line from Nivea at all. The next thing that we have here is I got the matching Nivea gentle toner also for dry and sensitive skin. I didn't find it to be really moisturizing honestly it was just whatever. Another thing that we have here is the Nivea Express Eye Makeup Remover. This was okay. I Again, the same issue comes up. It worked a little bit better because I think of the oils that were within the formula. It did take off some of my eye makeup and my face makeup, but again, not 100% of it was tackled by this product. So The next thing that I have here are three different creams also from Nivea, so I really did try to give the whole line a chance. The first First one that we can talk about is the Pure Natural Soothing Day Care. So this is supposed to be like a day cream that you can wear every single day when you go out. And I just thought the formula was really thick and kind of hard to sink into the skin and I just felt like there was this layer of cream all over my face that just wouldn't go away. It didn't really make me feel moisturized, it more so made me feel really greasy. The next thing that we have here is the Nivea Nourishing Day Cream and this was somewhat just the same thing made me feel greasy. It did moisturize technically. It was a very uncomfortable feeling. It has SPF 15 which is really not too much and honestly that won't really help you that much throughout the day. I would not recommend these creams. The last thing from the Nivea line here is the Nourishing Night Care. This was an even thicker cream compared to the day creams and Again, it just did not absorb into my skin. This stuff would get all over my pillows, all over my blanket. It was just, it did not sink in. And yeah, same feeling, super greasy, super uncomfortable, yeah. The next thing that we have here is the Nivea Exfoliating Scrub for normal skin. This was just terrible. One of my worst nightmares for exfoliating scrubs because the granules in it, the little beads that they call it, are just really rough on the skin and really just damage the texture of your skin and causes micro, micro cuts to the skin and I just really did not like this. This got into my eyes very often. It was not effective. The next thing from Nivea is this Serum Pearls, Q10 Plus Anti-Wrinkle Serum Pearls. I thought that this was just horrible. Like I, You can see here that I didn't even end up finishing it and I just tossed it out because the serums, you really had to like really push it in there for them to start disappearing. And anything, anything that you put on top of this would not sink in. It would just stay on top of your face. This overall terrible, I couldn't even use it on my body. And then now we have the Neutrogena Naturals Multivitamin Nourishing Daily Moisturizer. First things first, I hated the scent of this. It smells like oatmeal and like goats. I did not like this. It didn't sink into my skin. It did feel moisturizing, but I just didn't like the texture of the moisturizer. I'm just much more used to moisturizers that just are super soft, super silky, and sink into the skin, whereas this did none of that. Final last item that we have here is the Pond's Dry Skin Cream. For this, I mean, it wasn't absolutely horrible, but it was just that I really didn't like the texture of this cream. I found it to be really thick, and I think maybe that's just a trend or how Western skincare brands make their creams, but it's just really thick. It just felt like there was this huge layer on top of my skin and it couldn't breathe. So that was everything for my year's worth of empties video. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed it. I kind of went through the really amazing products that I really, really love and I'll link them down below in the description bar. And then I had some products where they were okay, they weren't horrible, but they also weren't amazing and I just kind of used them for the sake of using them and not wasting the product. And then we had some really just, I would not recommend these products, I definitely think they're a waste of your money. The ingredients in the products too as well, especially for that whole Nivea line. I've checked it on this app that I use called Skin Diary and the ingredients in the products aren't good as well. There are definitely a lot of filler 
colors. Some are really harmful for the environment and some are really harmful for your body. So yeah, uh, thank you so very much for tuning in today and please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so very much for watching this video and stay tuned for the next one. Bye!